Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another um, part of the lecture series uh, in SBI 4UO. Uh, today we're going to look at chemical bonding and water. And um, the first thing we're going to start to look at are uh, what we call intramolecular bonds. And intramolecular bonds are bonds that form within a molecule. Now, if you recall back to grade uh, 10 chemistry, you're going to remember some of these. So, for example, we had ionic bonds. And ionic bonds occurred when um, electrons were stolen from one atom and used by another. So we can say that electrons were transferred, transferred from one atom to another. And um, the alternative to ionic bonds, and ionic bonds of course occur between uh, metals and non-metals. So uh, you can think of these as, for example, sodium chloride. Uh, the alternative to this is, are covalent bonds. And these occur when electrons are shared between atoms. And a perfect example of covalent bonds would be between two non-metals, um, such as carbon and oxygen in carbon dioxide. So if you look at uh, covalent bonds a little bit more closely, there are two different kinds that we need to look at in biology. There are non-polar covalent bonds, and these occur between atoms of uh, similar electronegativity. So these occur when the two atoms that are involved um, have a, an approximate similar affinity to electrons. And a perfect example of this would be if you had a molecule such as um, diatomic oxygen or um, oxygen gas. Okay? And in this case you'd have um, two oxygen molecules, so of course they have the same electronegativity, they like electrons the same, and they're going to equally share their, um, their electrons. Uh, of course, the, the opposite to nonpolar covalent bonds will be polar covalent bonds. And polar covalent bonds occur, of course, when you have um, more than one atom um, bonding in a molecule that um, have different electronegativities. And a perfect example of this would be in water. So in H2O, we have hydrogen, which does not have a very strong electronegativity, and oxygen, which does have a very strong electronegativity. Um, so if we look at an oxygen molecule with our, or with a, at a water molecule with our oxygen and our hydrogen um, bonds being formed, we have our single oxygen and two hydrogens, what you end up finding is that this is a relatively negative area and this is a relatively positive area of the molecule. And what this means is that you end up with a polar molecule. Um, and this is extremely important when you look at how water interacts both with itself and other molecules. Now the next class of bonds that we need to look at here are called intermolecular bonds. And intermolecular bonds occur between different molecules. So intramolecular bonds occurred within a molecule. Intermolecular bonds occur uh, between molecules. So intramolecular forces um, are bonds that occur between molecules. And uh, this relates to the last section that we were talking about. Um, if you have an oxygen atom and a hydrogen atom and another hydrogen atom and you have water, as we mentioned, you have a relatively negative section of the molecule and a relatively positive section of the molecule. And what this means is that um, as you know, opposites attract, and therefore if you have a bunch of water molecules together, which does tend to happen, um, you have water attracted to itself. Um, what this area is called, or this attraction is called, is an H-bond. And this forms um, when uh, the relatively positive area of hydrogen is attracted to a relatively negative area of another molecule, which certainly can be water itself. These are fairly weak bonds, and they only have about 5% of the strength of a covalent bond. H-bonds will form between uh, hydrogen and nitrogen and fluorine and oxygen. And this has a very major impact on the solubility of other substances. So because of H-bonds, water has an extremely high boiling point and it holds itself together. It also means that water has um, a very high surface tension. And this is because water molecules like to stick together. 
and they like to cling to each other because of these H bonds. Okay, now uh, we need to take a look at something that's related to bonding, which is the solubility of substances in water. Now, as I'm sure you realize, if you think about it, stuff has to be able to be dissolved in water for it to um, get into a living thing. Everything we know that's living depends on water, and if you won't dissolve in water, then you're not likely to be easily added into a living thing. So as water is polar, uh, it can dissolve other polar particles quite well. So things like salt, sodium chloride, are very easily dissolved. However, things like fats and oils are not so easily dissolved, and they have to be absorbed into a body a different way. And for this reason, we end up having two different words that we can use to describe um, how things dissolve in water. One of these is called hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means that it's water-loving and dissolves very well in water. Alternatively, hydrophobic means that it's water-fearing and does not dissolve very well in water. So it's interesting to note here that um, both carbon dioxide and oxygen are both nonpolar substances. If you look at their chemical model, um, they do not have a polar end, and therefore they don't dissolve very well in water, and therefore we have carrier molecules in our body to carry these around. And that carrier molecule is called hemoglobin. Okay, let's take a look at some unique properties of water now. Um, the first one that we're, we're going to look at an observation here. So let's make a little table. This is going to be our observation. And if you take a look, you can see that um, uh, you step out of the shower, you notice that water clings to you. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. The properties that we're going to talk about with water clinging are... So we're going to talk about this as being cohesion or adhesion. Cohesion is the property that water possesses that it clings to itself. And this is due to H bonds. And water um, is attracted to itself. And what that means is that when you have water attracted to itself, you have um, things like surface tension and the next property we talked about was adhesion. Now adhesion occurs um, when water is attracted to other polar molecules. So because of H bonds, water is attracted to other polar molecules. Um, adhesion usually refers to being attracted to something else besides itself. Cohesion means that water is attracted to itself. And this is uh, most easily seen in capillary action. And this is when water will actually creep up the side of a glass. Um, if you have, um, you've probably seen it in graduated cylinders, but if you look at water in a graduated cylinder, it forms what's called a meniscus where it's actually attracted to the the glass and it creeps up the side of the glass just like that and forms what's called a meniscus so when you have water inside a glass you'll see this capillary action where it's actually drawn up the side of the so the second characteristic or observation we're going to make is that water absorbs a lot of heat and that is also to say that water has a very high heat uh, specific heat capacity. And this is also a result of hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds hold water together so that even while it is absorbing energy, those molecules are not moving around nearly as much as other molecules would. What does this cause? Well, it, it, it means that you and I and all other organisms are able to maintain our body temperature much more easily. So the other observation here is that because of uh, water being able to absorb a lot of heat is that it has a very high specific heat of vaporization. And what that means is it takes a lot of energy to evaporate water. Well, what good is that? Well, what it means is that we are able to cool ourselves very, very easily. Not just us, but other animals, uh, trees, plants, and everything else that's alive. And the last observation we're going to make here is that solid water 
is less dense than liquid water. And this is a result of um, water having its highest density at 4 degrees Celsius. Uh, 